welcome back to my youtube channel my name is remy thanks for tuning in on my channel i discuss on faith lifestyle and development so if you're interested in any of those things please subscribe to my youtube channel and also if you're a new subscriber please leave a comment down below in the comment section letting me know that you're a new subscriber so i can give you a special shout out you're the real you know vip you're the real mvp you know for my video if you're a new subscriber thank you for subscribing and i hope you stay for the long for a long time so um also i have a bunch of other videos on my youtube channel so go check out my other videos as well you know give it a thumbs up give this video a thumbs up if you like it subscribe show me some love you know help my channel to grow guys i need you to help me my to help my channel to grow so please subscribe so if you like my content and you've been coming back you know to view my content please subscribe because i think i was sitting in my you know analytics that about 60 percent of my viewers are not subscribed so guys what are you waiting for fear god <laughs> you know please subscribe to my youtube channel so 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 <clears throat> wait what <clears throat> one second let me drink water so i'm really excited um about today's video today's video is titled grow through it don't just go through it right it's a little bit of a tongue twister grow through it don't just go through it <laughs> but um i'm gonna be talking about that in today's video and um if you're interested definitely keep watching so i was thinking about this the other day and something came into my heart and i just felt the need to share right and it has to do with when we're going through difficult times when we're going through hard times in the world um, when we're going through our challenges personal challenges world challenges like we're dealing with you know in this day and age in this present times um, with the pandemic and all all of those things but um, it's it just got me thinking like wow you know how important it would be to actually grow through your situation rather than just going through the motions and just going through it and being miserable and not learning or gaining anything from that season so i wanted to you know share today on some things on on some ways on how to you know grow through certain situations and just to give perspective on that so the first point is where is god in all of this have you ever felt like there was a season in your life where you prayed to God and before you even finished praying, God had already answered your prayers. Answered prayer is sweet. Like answered prayers makes you feel great, right? So if you've been in a season where God was answering all your prayers and, you know, making sure that you were fine before you even lifted your voice, God has already come down. You're, you know, you already sort things out for you. And then you get to a season where it feels like God is no longer there or God is no longer trying to answer your prayers as quickly as he used to. So week one, you're praying the same prayer. One month passes by, you're praying the same prayer. Um, three months, six months, a year, two years, you're still praying the same prayer. And you're like, wait, where is God in all of this? pretty sure God can see me right now. I'm pretty sure God can hear me right now. Where is he though? So, you know, I just wanted to talk about that and, you know, shed some more light on this whole topic, right? So where is God in all of this, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, comment down in the comment section. It can't just be only me. It can't be only me where it feels like, you know, you know, you're praying the same prayer over and over and over again, year in, year out. And it just, it just seems like God is not answering. If you've been there, just say, I know what you're talking about <laughs> in the comment section. But, um, you know, God seems to be nowhere to be found. Like he has forgotten about, you feel like he has forgotten about you. You feel like he's not listening. You feel like he doesn't just care about you anymore. Um, God seems silent. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where God seems silent? And thank you, Holy Spirit. It came to my mind how using the analogy of a student and a teacher or a student and a professor. So the relationship between the professor and the student, you know, during the school year is very interactive. 
raise up your hand ask questions if you have any questions go to the professor's office hours and all this good stuff and then come the day of the test or come the day of the exam the professor is there but he cannot speak to you he's there but he cannot help you you cannot raise you know your hand up and ask a question you know from your professor during the test because that's the period where you're supposed to prove that you know what you're doing and you've been paying attention all along jesus is the same way jesus is a father to us jesus is our friend god is our friend jesus is lord so he's our friend right um and when we're going through something sometimes jesus is there but he's just silent not like he's not there because sometimes we think god is not there and he cannot see that we really desperately need him right now and if he doesn't show up right now only god knows what will happen he's there he can see that but he's just silent just like a teacher or a professor will be silent when there's a text going on and it just made me think i'm like huh that's something right so that means that god is trying to teach you something right so rather than look at your situation like oh my god this sucks i just want to get through it i'm done with it you know i'm so over it um this is not working out i'm tired i'm exhausted this makes no sense to me anymore pay attention because god is trying to teach you something grow through your situation grow grow <laughs> again tongue to start grow through your challenges rather than just going through it and being miserable um while you're going through that season right so just know that god is trying to teach you something when you're going through a, a situation that feels like an exam of life or like a test of life or like a test of your faith or your, a test of your belief in jesus because <laughs> you have those moments <laughs> you know so when you feel like you're going through that path ask god lord i want to grow through this through this season what are you trying to teach me right and you know no matter how you might feel you might feel like you've been abandoned by god you might feel like you're in a dry season of your life or you're in a barren season of your life as some people call it where you feel like you're not yielding fruit you're not doing as you used to do you're not motivated like you were motivated you know months or years before whatever the case may be just know that god is there right and you're not the only one trust me in the book of job 23 8 to 9 <laughs> you know job writes in the bible bless that guy <laughs> bless that guy sometimes when i think of his challenges i'm just like ah oh, remy you're fine you're okay but job 23 8 to 9 says but if i go to the east he is not there if i go to the west i do not find him when he is at work in the north i do not see him when he turns to the south i catch no glimpse of him you see here in the book of Job where Job was feeling like God wasn't there, right? Um, was feeling like, you know, you couldn't find him, you couldn't see him. But just know that God is there. God is there with you. God is there with you. Please know that, right? Please don't ask where is God in all of this. He's there. He sees it. He sees what you're going through. He hears your cry. He hears your, you know, your prayers. He's right there with you. Now, my encouragement to you, right? So, what do you do now? What's going on, right? You're in a, you're in a, you know, challenging situation. You want and you need God's help, like right now, <laughs> like desperately. And I'm over here saying God is there, and He's not doing anything. So He's been silent so what my encouragement to you is don't give up don't give up on god because god will not give up on you god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything we can think of or even imagine so don't give up on god god will never give up on you <sighs> humans are so limited in our understanding we are so limited in what we can see what we know but just know this, that regardless of the situation, don't give up on God. Don't throw in the towel on God because he will never give up on you. God is too faithful to fail. God is too faithful to disappoint. I have never seen a situation where God failed. Like, it's just not a thing. You know, there's a saying that I've seen recently that says, 
um, what God cannot do does not exist, right? So God is too faithful to fail. He's too faithful to disappoint. Press through, you know, resist the lie of the enemy, you know, trying to tell you that there's no God, you know, be very intentional and be very in tuned with God and what he's trying to do. And the wilderness of life is where we really discover what we truly hunger for. When we're going through, you know, a tough time, a really challenging time, you know, uh, a really difficult situation, it will really test whether we are, you know, all for God or for the things of God, whether we're for the creator or the creation. Where is your heart? Where does your heart truly lie? Come what may, are you able to say God is good? Come what may, are you able to say thank you, Jesus? Come what may, guys. So not like when everything is rosy and, you know, you're just getting answered prayers left and right. I'm talking about situations whereby <laughs> you, <laughs> things are literally like upside down and you're still smiling, you're still saying thank you, God. You're still, say, you're still saying God is good. Keep that in mind. What are you after, the creator or the creation? And if we seek God, we will find him. The book of Jeremiah 29 says, Jeremiah 29, um, 13 to 14, it says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. How beautiful is that? God is in that situation. He might be silent, but he's there. And God says that, you know, if, you know, we will be found, he will be found by us in the name of Jesus. How beautiful is that? And Hebrews eleven six 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him where's your faith rather than saying God where are you say God I know you're here I know you're seeing me I know you're hearing my cry I know you're seeing the situation that I'm in and I trust you Lord I don't know how you're gonna do it I don't know what you're trying to do but I trust you reckless abandon literally like I don't you know, when you're in that space with God, where everything feels like everything is dead, everything is hopeless, everything is just like, everything sucks, for lack of a better term. But you're saying that, Lord, it doesn't feel like you're here, but I know by faith that you're here with me. I know, And I know that you're standing with me, regardless. So let's just, let's try. It can be hard sometimes, but let's try to, instead of asking, where is God in all of this? Or God, where are you? Acknowledge that he is there with you. Acknowledge that God is there with you. So we're still, you know, again, growing through your challenges, you know, growing through it rather than just going through it, right? That's what we're talking about. Um, so I talked about, you know, the old idea of where is God in all of this or God, where are you? And, you know, my encouragement to you on that now the second thing i'm going to point out in this topic is growing pains right when you start to mature in christ in your relationship with god you need to go through certain challenges in life to help build your faith to help build your character to help you become more like jesus fam listen to me jesus christ the only begotten son of god came to this world he died for us it wasn't pretty the whole experience that jesus had on the cross and you know they went they nailed him and they killed him and dragged him spat on him it wasn't pretty at all it really wasn't but guess what part of our christianity part of growing is having to go through certain situations and grow through that right when we when, when christ died we died with him when he resurrected we resurrected with him so if you think that you can call yourself a Christian and for many years you've never gone through any form of challenge that is going to draw you closer to God, check your Christianity. Check your Christianity, literally. Growth as a Christian really kicks off. And I have it you know, written down in my notes. Growth as a Christian really kicks off when God has taken you through some rough patch. When you're still a baby, you know, spiritual infant, you know, God is feeding you with milk. You know, you say, God, I want this. God gives it to you. God, um, I want this. You know, before you even say anything, God has answered. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But at some point, when God stays silent, what do you do? <laughs> do you deny God? 
do you say god doesn't exist this is this whole thing is is fake <laughs> it's fake news god doesn't exist i'm so done with it what do you do that's where growth in christianity comes in the fact that you can go through a challenge you can go through a tough time and still say lord jesus i love you god you are awesome that growth <laughs> when everything doesn't seem rosy and you're still saying all of those things and your heart truly still loves god that is growth right and if you think about it right growing pains at first it feels uncomfortable well i want god to just answer me right away i don't want to have to sweat you know i'm i don't want to have to pray too hard if god can just do it right away that'll be awesome well that's not gonna last very long because that's not even how life or anything works right so if you think about it at first you know you can make a mess so let's let's use a child as an example you know as a child as an example when a child is just born into a family you know the parents are nurturing the child you know monitoring the child all the time because you know it's a baby and you can't leave a baby to do anything because they can't do anything on their own so you have to feed them change their clothes bathe them and all that stuff um and you know feed them as well and then it gets to a point where you're like okay this kid should be learning how to feed his or herself this kid should be able to learn how to go to the bathroom themselves at first it might seem messy when they eat they can have the food all over the place but at some point they're going to learn how to eat better that's part of growth as christians right we get to a point where god allows us to feed ourselves and help us grow in our walk with god we might become frustrated at some point in the beginning like well this really sucks i'm just making a mess god just come and fix it but part of growth is going through that time and growing getting the skills you're supposed to gain getting the endurance the perseverance the patience the pruning that you're supposed to you know get from all that process to get to the level that god wants you to be to be more like jesus to be more like jesus um I have a couple Bible verses that I wanted to share with you guys. First Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 2. It says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? So I think Paul was talking here and he was saying that, um, yeah, you're not ready yet. You're not, you're not grown. You're not adults. You still want milk. You're not ready for solid food. As Christians, we have to move past milk and get into solid food. If you're a Christian for years and you still on milk ask God to help you to help you grow for solid food right so that there are some behaviors that they shouldn't even be finding in you because you're a child of God because you're a Christian there are some behaviors that your name and that behavior should not even be in the same place because you're a Christian you're a child of God another Bible verse I love this one it was 5 um, 8 to 10 son though he was he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for, home, for all who obey him and was des designated by God to be a high priest. This is Jesus that we're talking about. He suffered. Jesus suffered when he was on the earth. But guess what? He was made perfect. He became the source of eternal salvation. If Jesus didn't go through all of that and he was just chilling, I'm a, you know, I'm a child of God, literally. <laughs> so what I did there. <laughs> I'm a child of God, you know, nothing do me, just chop life, you know, chop life gang. If he didn't do and go through the you know the things that he went through to suffer and die for us, which glory, which eternal salvation, which perfection is he gonna gain? None. None. So when you grow through challenges, there's a prize at the end. Growth, prosperity, salvation, the image of Christ will be revealed in your life. And then Hebrews 5, 12 um, to 14. It's kind of similar to what I was reading in 1 Corinthians earlier on. And it says that 
in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you in elementary teach you the elementary truth of god's word all over again you need milk not solid food anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil fam if you're going to grow as a christian you have to graduate from milk to solid food in your walk with christ and you the only way you can get to that is to go through a challenge and go grow through it not just go through it that's the only way all right let me just move really quickly for um, our time's sake. The next point I'm going to make. So I already talked about, you know, growing pains and how to grow through, grow through it. I talked about, you know, at first when we are questioning where is God and all of this. And now I want to talk about a p positive perspective. Positive perspective. It depends on how you see your challenge. It depends on how you see the pain that you're going through. It's all, <laughs> I was joking the other day, but I was actually serious. Everything is, in life is all about perspective. It's all about how you see it, right? So if you're going through a hard time, but you're saying, you know what? I know I'm going through a hard time right now. I know this makes no sense right now, but I know that there's something good coming out of this. I know that this is to train me for better. I know that, you know, something glorious is going to come out of this. <laughs> So when you see a situation from a different angle and you say, you know what, I might be going through a tough time right now, but I know that something good, something positive will come out of this. That's perspective. That's a positive perspective. Real purpose of hard times is to train you, to purify you, to strengthen you, and prepare us for a new move of God's spirit, resulting in us to become more fruitful. So if you're going through a, you know, a tough time, just know that God is trying to bring something beautiful out of it. God is trying to bring something glorious out of it. It's natural to panic. It's natural to behave unwisely. So you start to, you know, do all sorts of things to get easy fix and, you know, to get through the challenging time really fast. You want to go back to the norm, the old normal. And God is trying to say, fam, this is the new normal. Figure it out, right? So it's natural to panic. But what is our perspective in the long run? What's our perspective in the, in the long run? Because guess what? If you don't learn what you're supposed to learn, you prolong the process. You prolong the, you know, the wilderness experience. You prolong the challenging experience if you don't learn quickly what you're supposed to learn. Which will lead to further frustration. So the more you're in the challenging situation and you're not learning, then you're getting frustrated that it's not ending on time, but then you're not learning still, and then it's prolonging, and then you're still frustrated. So it's just better to not be frustrated and ask God, Lord, I know there's something great out that, that's going to come out of this. I want to have a pers positive perspective. Help me. How do you view your wilderness season? Let's comment. Let's chat in the comment section. Guys, I need you to engage. I need you to, you know, comment in the comment section. Um, how do you view your wilderness season? I wanted to share uh, a scripture for this one. Deuter Deuteronomy 8 verse 2 says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you will keep his commands. So just think about what God is trying to do. Think about it that, okay, God loves me and he wants to teach me something and he wants me to grow in him and have, you know, feed on, you know, real meat and not just milk, you know, solid food, right? Now, lastly, lastly, shine as gold, guys. When you're trying to grow through a situation, shine as gold. Just remember gold. Gold is purified. And when God wants to purify your life, you're going to have to go through some fire. Just like gold, you know, has to be purified through fire, through burning, to bring out the real beauty and quality of the gold. And for us to be purified in Christ, we have to go through some, some, some challenging times so that we can come out better. I don't know how long the process might last. You might be thinking, well, how long is it going to go for? I don't know. How long is your challenge going to go for? How long is that wilderness season in your life going to go for? I'm not sure. But I know that God is up to, God is up to something good. I know that God is up to something amazing. I have some scriptures here, actually, that I wanted to share. Um, 
Malachi 3.3. 3. Uh, it says, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings and righteousness. Hmm. God is a refiner. He's a purifier. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48.10. See, I have refined you, though not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Oh my gosh. You know, just, just know that God is there. He has a plan and it's going to be great at the end. <laughs> this last Bible verse, uh, actually second to last, Isaiah 125, the, um, <laughs> the TPT, that one was very funny. It says, I will bring my fiery hand upon you and burn you and purify you into something clean. You see what I'm saying? God is purifying you. He's making you clean. He's making you better. He's making you finer, more polished more like christ more refined it's amazing to think about it might not feel like it <laughs> that's the thing when gold is being burnt it doesn't feel like it it doesn't feel like it's going to come out beautiful but it comes out stunning and that's how you're going to come out when god is you know done bringing you through that situation as long as you grow through it and not just complain you know through it right and then I think last Bible verse I wanted to share is 1 Peter 1, 6-7. It says, May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've been put, you've, you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes. For even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor. When Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed, Jesus will be revealed in your life in the name of Jesus. When you come out, <laughs> you're coming out on top. I'm telling you, whatever this, the situation may be, when you come out, Jesus will be revealed through your life. You just be shining anyhow. <laughs> your face will be shining. Everything just be looking great because God is going to literally reveal Jesus out of your situation if you decide to grow through it and not just go through it. I hope somebody has been blessed by this. I really hope somebody has been blessed by this. Um, the process is not always fun. It's not always, you know, fun and, you know, games. But I promise you, you're coming out on the other side. You're coming out better. You're coming out refined, purified. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. So please, guys, grow through your situation. Don't just go through it grow through what you go through i'm gonna end the video here i don't want it to be too long i had something that i wanted to share um of like the actual process of how gold is being you know purified and you know being refined and the process of you know removing unwanted particles from the gold and all of that stuff but it comes down to one point and i want to you know leave um end on this point that the process is not always beautiful but the end result is amazing and once you pay attention and you ask God for direction and what you want to learn, what he wants you to learn in the situation, it's going to make the process better and the end result will be glorious, I promise. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay encouraged. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm so sure of this, like I know money. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So stay encouraged and I, you know, I pray to God that you grow through whatever it is that you're going through. You're going to come out better. God be with you. God be with your family. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this channel with your friends and your family members. Tell them to subscribe as well. Go watch my other videos before you leave. Go watch my other videos. I have a ton of other videos. Comment down below if you're a new subscriber. So I can give you a special shout out and you know, meet you virtually and give you e-hugs. <laughs> That's what we're giving in 2020, e-hugs. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.